The Lord be with you. Welcome to Kiltavon, the beautiful village in County Carlow, the location of one of the four churches in the Buntlody Union of Parishes, St. Paul's Church behind me. And I'm, I'm here in the grounds of Conway's pub and restaurant, a very well-known hostelry in this area. Of course, like every part of the hospitality industry, it's had a challenging time during the COVID restrictions. But given the good quality of the food here, it has managed to weather the storm and is quite busy even on this afternoons. And I'm sure it'll be busier later on. But why are we here? Well, at the beginning of this service of morning prayer for the second Sunday after the Epiphany, this Sunday we look in the Gospel at the, the wedding feast at Cana. Or maybe we could say the wedding feast at Conway's um, here in Kildavan. Because this is a story about a hostelry, a bit like this maybe, or it could be a private home. But one way or the other, it was a gathering of people for a wedding. And the thing is, in this Gospel, it is not just about Jesus turning water into wine. It is about Jesus turning a vast amount of water into the finest quality wine. So to some people, when you think about the uh, turning of water into wine, it, it sounds something like a, a party trick, some kind of a, a, a very clever thing to do. But the question why we, what we have to answer today is, why does Jesus turn so much water into wine. And of course another question, who filled up those huge six water jars that were kept for the Jewish rites of purification? There was no running water at the time. So this was like a reservoir of water, these six huge jars that were filled up to the brim. And then another question, if we're talking about wine, how many bottles of wine would that be today? Well, let's start. Each of those huge big jars, we are told by archaeologists, would have held between 20 and 30 gallons of water. So, at a minimum, we could say that's 120 gallons, if you're talking about six large jars. Or, in, in modern measurement, that's 600 litres. So, let's see. These beer kegs here, and this is an empty one, otherwise I wouldn't be lifting it like this. Um, these beer kegs hold about 50 litres, or 82 pints, if you're in the business. And the miracle at Cana, therefore, would need about 12 of these barrels to hold the water that was to be turned into wine. So just picture it, 12 barrels like this, all in a row. And then if we want to talk about wine, not beer, as would come in these barrels, we're talking about bottles. Now, a bottle of wine, a bottle of wine holds about 750 millilitres. So, if we're talking about how many uh, bottles in a barrel, we measure that out, it's about 67 bottles per barrel. And if you want to stretch that out to the amount in 12 barrels, then we're talking about 804 bottles. Of course, we're not going to be at a wedding giving out uh, bottles to everybody, we're going to be using glasses. So, let's see how many glasses of wine, therefore, did Jesus create out of the water at Cana. And if you measure it all out, that's 4,020 glasses of the very best wine. And so the question is, it's hardly likely there were all that many guests, especially if it was a, a house wedding. 
And these people would not have been wealthy because Jesus was born into quite a poor peasant society. So is this more than just about satisfying the thirst of the guests at the wedding? Is this not also about a different kind of a marriage? A marriage between the creator and creation? About the abundance and the generosity of God to satisfy and to create an abundance of, of love for all of his creation. And so the feast of the wedding at Cana is as much to do with God's abundant love and the miracle of love in our lives through Jesus Christ as it is about the arrangements for a wedding. And so today, at this morning prayer, let us just reflect on that abundance of love as symbolised through the turning of water into wine. And so we turn to the Book of Common Prayer, page 101, to continue our service of morning prayer. The Lord be with you. Well, before we begin our service of morning prayer, it's very much on my mind that we are living in a time of trauma in our country and indeed a time of great change. And especially thinking of the murder of Ashleen Murphy and all those who mourn her death and indeed the Gardaí investigating the murder and now all those who live in fear, especially women, and thinking of all those who we know and whatever can be done to bring about the changes that would bring true equality in our country so that everybody can live without fear. And so we pray as we worship God today for the strength and the wisdom to bring about those changes. And in terms of change, we heard with some shock the news that our Bishop, uh, dear Bishop Michael Burroughs, is to be moving and has been elected as the Bishop of the new joint diocese of uh, Chum and Limerick and Killaloo effectively the whole west coast of Ireland and so as we pray for him we also pray for this diocese that has to um, obviously find a new bishop and Bishop Burroughs will be a huge loss to us here in this Bunclody Union of Parishes and no doubt throughout the diocese but we pray for him and for Clare and their family in their brave and challenging um, ministry ahead. And so, turning to page 101 in the Book of Common Prayer. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his Spirit, we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And so we turn to page 104, and we say the Jubilate. O shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth, serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his loving mercy is forever, his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading from the Old Testament is read by Mr. Kenneth Rothwell. The first reading is from the prophecy of, Z of Isaiah chapter 62, beginning at verse 1. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, My delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And our psalm this day is Psalm 36, verses 5 to 10, which will begin on page 631. Psalm 36. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness stands like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You, Lord, shall save both man and beast. How precious is your loving mercy, O God! All mortal flesh shall take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They shall be satisfied with the abundance of your house. They shall drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in, in your light shall we see light. O oh, continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your righteousness to those who are true of heart. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We now have a reading from the New Testament, read by Mr. Kenneth Rothwell. The second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. Concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Holy Spirit of God ever says, Let Jesus be cursed. 
and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given, through the Spirit, the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another the disconcernment of spirits. To another various kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by the one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Thank you, Ken. And now let us sing hymn 96, Jesus is Lord echoing the words from our last reading. This hymn was written by David Mansell, who the hymn book tells us was born in 1936. Sadly, what the hymn book doesn't say is that David died in the spring of 2020, just when the first COVID-19 lockdown was at its most severe and his funeral, therefore, was sadly, like so many others, very, very small in attendance. And yet David was a wonderful man. Apart from being an evangelist, he was also a scientist, a physicist and an engineer. And even though this hymn could not be sung at, its, uh, at his funeral, we sing it now in memory of him and to proclaim that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord, creation's voice proclaims it, for by his power each tree and flower was planned and made. Jesus is Lord, the universe declares it, sun, moon and stars in heaven cry, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, praise him with alleluias for Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. Yet from his throne eternal In flesh he came to die in pain On Calvary's tree Jesus is Lord From him all life proceeding He gave his life a ransom Thus setting us free Jesus is Lord Jesus is Lord Praise him with alleluias, for Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord, or sin the mighty conqueror. From death he rose, and all his foes shall own his name. Jesus is Lord, God sends his Holy Spirit, show by works of power that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Praise him with alleluias for Jesus is Lord. And 
Now our gospel will be read by Rachel Rothwell, who, apart from being a parishioner and a student of Carlo IT, also works from time to time in Conway's pub and restaurant across the road. And we thank Rachel for her introduction to Conway's earlier. A reading from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples was also invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the, wa- fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the steward who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed the story, and his disciples believed in him. Here is the Gospel. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, that gospel that we just heard Rachel reading there, the wedding feast at Cana, from the time it was written, imagine the listeners who are mainly the Jewish people, and they would be familiar with the language of marriage from the Old Testament. And indeed, this is far more than an account of a wedding. This is rich in symbolism. And as we heard Ken reading earlier from Isaiah chapter 62, it says, For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. So there is a coming together of heaven and earth when we think about the coming of God's kingdom. And effectively, it's a marriage made possible through the coming of Jesus Christ. Psalm 36 that we read earlier says, Lord, you shall save both man and beast. How precious is your loving mercy, O God. So this coming together, this abundance of love of God is all represented in that Uh, miracle of the wedding feast at Cana. In fact, it has to be understood much more widely. Otherwise, it looks like some kind of great party trick that that Jesus um, performed and so people could see that he was more than just uh, an ordinary human. The miracle is also a foretaste of our part in the divine marriage made possible through Jesus Christ. And it's perhaps easy to skip over when we hear that story of the wedding feast at Cana, the um, command of Jesus to fill those six huge water jars used, used for purification. No running water at that time. And so these big jars were essentially reservoirs of water for washing. Um, And they were so big, I mean, uh, the amount that they contained, and in the old uh, translations we hear about, they contained a couple of firkins, uh, essentially it means they were the size of about two of those beer kegs each. So, if we're talking in modern beer keg terminology, we're talking about 12 of those as we 
saw earlier when I was outside Conway's pub. But the filling of those, remembering that they didn't have plastic buckets at that time, never mind piped water, so there would have been heavy wooden buckets, one would have to walk to the nearest well, and there was a lot of filling of water to get uh, all the water that Jesus had requested. And so this job of filling those uh, water containers is what I want to focus on today. The servants who filled those water containers, they're not named in the Bible, and yet had they not done that, then the miracle at Cana couldn't have taken place, because there had to be water for it to be turned into wine. And I think of those servants as the church today, as you and me, those that do what has to be done to allow Christ to be manifest and to be present. And effectively, we are there as a shop window to show people the love of God in the world. So, whatever task we are being asked to do, it may not be the filling of those water containers, but it might be other tasks. Uh, then we are asked to do them, and to do them to the best of our ability. After all, those water containers were not just filled, but it says they were filled to the brim. There was the most that could be done, was done, to make that miracle possible. We could apply that awareness to any part of our lives. As I said, the church is a shop window on the world for people to come and check out what is God's kingdom like. So I'm begging you, I'm begging everybody who is part of our church to help in the filling of those proverbial water jars. Perhaps it could be the jam club, the Jesus and Me uh, club for the school children. Um, please ask Rachel Murphy or ask myself if you can help. Perhaps it is to do with the pointing of the camera uh, at our service at half eleven in Bonclody. Perhaps you know somebody who would be interested in pointing that camera so that the Zoom um, service can be seen at home by those who are not able to get to church. And perhaps it might be to read, either from your own home, as Ken was reading from earlier, or it might be in church. Or indeed, as we are only allowed to have one person singing in church, perhaps it could be yourself, or even two of you as a duet, uh, that, that could sing the hymns, uh, especially in Bunclody, where we have Sam playing the organ, uh, but we need somebody to sing along to the hymn. So, all of these are opportunities to do what Christ wants us to do, to make it possible for him to do the miracles, like the miracle at the wedding feast at Cana. And in his abundance, because all of that wine was far more than the wedding was going to ever need, but it is a representation of God's wonderful abundance in our own lives. And in Psalm 36 that we read, perhaps a couple of the verses might be a prayer to finish. Lord, we shall be satisfied with the abundance of your house. We shall drink from the river of your delights, for with you is the well of life, and in your light shall we see light. O oh, continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your righteousness to those who are true of heart. Amen.
We now proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 112. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers, and grant our government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. And so on this, the second Sunday after the Epiphany, our collect. Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On page 114. We say the first of the morning prayer collects. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we take some time for our own personal prayers. Heavenly Father, we praise your holy name and declare by word and music that Jesus is Lord. Help us to appreciate the symbolism of the wedding feast at Cana, that the coming of your kingdom is a marriage between heaven and earth, between the Creator and creation. Thanks to Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is a marriage, as Psalm 36 says, to save both man and beast. How precious is your loving mercy, O God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, today as we pray for your church throughout the world, we especially pray for Bishop Michael Burroughs and all he has meant to us here in this diocese. We wish him your richest blessing as he moves to a newly formed diocese taking in the old diocese of Tume, as well as Limerick and Killaloo. We ask your blessing on him and on Claire and the whole family in this new ministry. And we give thanks 
for all he has done and continues to do for the time he is here in this diocese of Cashel, Ferns and Ossery, and especially here in this Bunclody Union of Parishes, for all his work and friendship, all those who he has pastored to, and indeed we think especially of Mrs June Jackson today, a great friend of the family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for your world, for peace between all people and within families and especially for a real equality of respect between all men and women as we try to come to terms with the terrible murder of a young and gifted and precious teacher, Ashleen Murphy. Lord, comfort her family, knowing of your loving presence and the love of all those around her and indeed the determination of the Gardaí and all involved to bring about a new paradigm, a new paradigm of respect and equality. So that, as you say, Lord, we may not fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, bless all who are not well today. Especially we pray for all laid low by COVID-19. All who have to restrict their movements as close contacts. All in our schools and other workplaces struggling due to staff being absent. And for all with other ailments who are delayed in getting treatment due to the pressure being put on the health service by the pandemic. Lord, help us all to do everything we can to bring this pandemic to an end and to give the care needed to those who are sick once more. And those of us, Lord, who with you love and care for each one, we ask that you would lay your healing hand upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our comforter and our hope everlasting, we remember our loved ones who have gone on before us. Especially this week, we pray for the family and friends and the wider community deeply affected and grieving the loss of Ashleen Murphy from Tullamore. And we commend, Lord, all those who we miss. We commend them to your loving presence until that glorious day when we all long to meet you in the heavenly Jerusalem. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And so to our blessing, to God who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and with all those you hold in your heart this day and forevermore. Amen. So let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
In the name of Christ, amen.